Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So today I want to talk to you guys about one of the biggest acts of civil disobedience that I have seen across this country in a long time. Over the past couple years, we've seen multiple states introduce some new type of so-called assault weapons ban. And with those bans, a lot of time there's either grandfathering or there's registration that's involved. And there is one state out there right now that's saying we're not having it. And the numbers of people who are actually registering is so small it's less than one tenth of a percent. You are not going to believe what state is actually standing up to their government. Let's talk about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what's going on here. Now, even if you don't live there, you're probably aware of who J.B. Pritzker is and the so-called Protect Illinois Communities Act, which essentially and unconstitutionally banned most semi-automatic long guns in the state of Illinois, while at the same time forcing people to register what they already have. So if you own something that is now banned, the state wants to know who you are. They want all of your information, they want to know what you have, they want to dig into your personal life, and they want you to turn over all of that information. Well, how many people do you think actually followed through with that? So the state said that we want you to start or begin registration on October 1st of 2023. So now it's been like, what, almost three weeks? How many people have actually registered? Well, according to Illinois, there's something like 2,415,481 people that have FOID cards, which is the firearm owner ID identification card. Now with that card, they're assuming that a majority of those people have what is now banned. So far, there's only been 2,046 people that have actually registered. Now, 2,046 people is kind of a lot. It's more than I'd like to see. But it, as a percentage, that's only 0.08 of a percent of people have registered in the past three weeks. That's eight one hundredths of just 1% of people have registered in the now over three week period that the registration has been open, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now in this graph right here, you'll see that there is another number, which is kind of bigger, a 6,000 number. And that's because you have the amount of people who have done the registration process. Each one of those people may have had multiple things to register. And that's why the amount that's been registered is higher than the number of people who have actually registered something. So again, 0.08%. Okay, it's absolutely unbelievable. And it, it kind of, it just makes me happy. It just makes me happy to see that people in Illinois are saying, no, we're not gonna put up with it. We're not gonna give over our private information. It is none of your business to know what I own and what I have as my private property. And I'm not going to tell you what we have. I, I think it's absolutely phenomenal that somebody's finally standing up to their say, state and saying, look, this law is unconstitutional. We know it. And so we're not going to go, we're not going to go along with it. Now, unfortunately, as a side note, there are some people out there that are just stuck in legal limbo anyway, and couldn't register even if they wanted to. And that's because when the law took effect, it said you could keep what you had before this law was created, but you're going to have to register it, right? Well, in the middle of when that period was from when the law was created to the time that you had to start registering, there was an injunction. There was a lawsuit, then there was an injunction. And during that injunction time period when this law couldn't be enforced, people went out and a lot of people went out and they got what is now banned. Well, then there was a stay placed on that injunction. That means the law went back into effect. Well, these people still own these things, right? But the law says that if you owned it prior to when the law was created, then you have to register it. What, what's going on with the stuff that people got in the meantime, right? Those people are kind of left out because it's almost like a, a trap. If they were to register it, they have to put down when they got it. And if they got it after the law was created, then that's a violation in its own right. And so they would essentially be uh, self-incriminating or incriminating themselves if they filled out that paperwork and went through the registration process. So again, they're kind of stuck in legal limbo where they don't even know what to do. But anybody who had something prior to that is basically telling the state to, you know, kick rocks and shove it which is phenomenal. And this, I know it's just going to be a short video, but that was such a great number. I was curious to see what was going on in Illinois since the registration started. And I honestly, I wasn't expecting it to be 0.08%. It just shows that the people in Illinois are doing it right. Even if people continue to register at a, at a trickle, right? A slow trickle, it maybe will get up to 1%, but we're not even at a 10th of a percent yet. And we would have to get all the way up to 1% and 1% would still be low. So Again, I think it's phenomenal, and I wanted to share that number with you. It just makes me feel good inside. Thanks again for watching, guys. Really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.